All right, here we go. This is the first card. Let me uh, close this timer. All right, it's time. A two mana zero three from Buildswater. Wharf Red, and it has Overwhelm. I have plus one, plus zero for each different round. You've damaged the enemy Nexus. Yo, Plunder gets another finisher. Okay, how many times do you have to damage the enemy Nexus for this to be good? Because you can level Sejuani and Gangplank by hitting Nexus five times. And then you have a five, three for two mana. Yeah, I think if you do it three times, you have a good card. Two times is not enough. We had like this 2-3 elephant in the game for Targon and that never saw play. I For Plunder though, Plunder really wants to like play cards that can hit the Nexus. And this doesn't do that early in the game. It keeps growing. Oh, okay. So if you hit the Nexus with something, well, this is on the board. It gets plus one. I don't know. This, this seems decent to me. This seems pretty good. It's, I don't know. Like you always have to ask yourself, right? Will this actually see play in a deck? And I think, honestly, Build Sweater can probably make some space for this. It's only once. The effect can only happen once a turn. Yeah, this works everywhere. It, can, it works in deck. It works on board. It works in hand. Like a card that can grow over the course of a game. Always pretty good. And in decks that want to run this, they will most likely be hitting the Nexus on turn one. Like Plunder decks have wanted to hit the Nexus every single turn. I actually kind of like this card. I think it's pretty good. All right, next card. Yo, it's Lux. Two mana slow from Demacia. It, am I... Grant allies plus one, plus one? Wait. It's a Bannerman. Okay, but I'm just getting Vietnam flashbacks to Bandle City Demacia. That's so scary. The fact you can use this for two spell mana. This seems pretty damn good to me. Like, all those decks care about is protecting their boards. And this does that so well. The one downside, of course, with board-centric decks from Demacia is always that they're not very good at drawing cards. So the fact that you have this in your hand over a unit it's sometimes pretty awkward. It is a slow spell, yes. So you do need to set up a board and then play this. So it, it is possible to counterplay this. Again, when is this card good? How many cards do you need on the board for this to be good? We, I would play this if I have a board with three minions, I think. I think you kind of have to. Three or four? Yeah. Okay, so I honestly like this. I want the Masia decks to do more than just build a board and rally. I want them to protect their board and play a little more fair. Like having to build a board in the Masia is not so hard, but the fact that you can now work to keep that board and play it like the game like that is, is cool in my opinion. I like this card in very aggressive decks from the Masia with cheap cards. So in that category are Scouts and they are the Bandle City, previously Yordlan Arms decks. I think it's uh, it's pretty good. Seems good to me. I Okay, I don't think you can play this in Scouts, but I think in the Bandle City variant, this is quite good. All right, let's just go next. Undergrowth. Three mana fast from Shadow Owls. Toss three, drain two from a unit. Yo, even more deep support? Wait, drain two? Okay, that's actually very good. This is a very good card. I like this a lot. This combined with the Mega Tusk, Deep suddenly has a lot of ways to sustain. Drain two? My god. It is three mana though. It's not Valfi's mana. This is... Okay, while we're at it, hey Riot, if you're watching, can we make this Maokai's champion spell? Yo. Now this will... I don't think this will see play outside of Deep. I don't think so. But that's... That's a really good card. Specifically for Maokai and Deep decks. Nowhere else. This is so good. So now you don't really care anymore if you play Lure of the Depths on turn three anymore or you play this to remove something because you're progressing your game plan either way. But with, by, doing, by playing this, you're progressing your game plan and potentially removing something for your opponent while you're healing yourself. That is very good. This seems like a good card. All right. Six mana burst from Shurima. Sands of Time. Give enemies minus two, minus zero this round. Create an instant sentry in hand. Okay. This, this seems really bad, but it's it's pretty interesting that they're finally giving instant sentries outside of the clock hand. This is, I don't think this is good. It is fearsome support, true. Instant sentry is the card that either creates a landmark for you or progresses something by four. It's the card from the clock hand. I don't think this is good. Yeah, this seems bad to me. I want to think this is good, but it's, you're not doing anything really. What does this do against any of the decks that are good right now? Like, what does this do against Viego? What does this do against Faded? It does literally nothing. It's for Thralls, for Turbo Installing. That seems not good enough. I don't think this card will ever see play in a deck. All right, let's just look at the other cards. Tilt over two mana burst. Discrete Invitation. Create a fleeting shady character or Kempunk Shredder in hand and reduce its cost by one. Wait. Shady character is the 4 mana 1 3 that copies a follower. Kempunk Shredder is the 5 mana card as a 4 2 that deals 1 to everything. Uh, yeah. No, I, I. I'm not seeing this one. Oh, it's a 5 mana 5 2. Okay, so then it becomes a 4 mana 5 2 after this discount. This seems bad, but 
you know, you are creating characters. Those characters or cards you create, I don't think Victor even cares about that. Four mana, five to red card is fine. I mean, you're also paying two mana burst for it, so technically it's six mana. And it's fleeting too. Nah, this seems terrible. You know what this is? No, 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 I see what's going on here. Riot was testing the sputtering song spinner. The seven mana card that creates two mana spells. And they're like, okay, you know, the pool is a little too consistent. The pool of two mana cards, the pool of two mana spells, is just too good. So let's put a bad one in there. Let's print a really bad two mana card. You know, this one. Here, this one. It's a nerf to this card. Trust me. <laughs> Alright, let's look at the final card. Alright, here we go. Targon. Six mana burst. Consult the heavens. Fully heal an ally, then grow its power equal to its health. Oh no! Dude, it's inner fire! No, 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 it's inner fire! Does anyone remember Hearthstone Priest? Literally, like, having a million health and then setting the attack equal to the health? Oh god, no. <laughs> That's, that, that is a pretty funny card though, I'll be honest. I feel like uh, if the Soraka Braum deck was ever good, this card would actually make it a lot better. This plus Nautilus? <laughs> or, all right, yeah, this plus Nautilus, or you can just go deep. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. <laughs> that is actually true. In Braum Soraka decks, you never really want to block the Soraka. Or it's, yeah, or it's Bubble Bear support. That, it's just Bubble Bear support, all right. Yeah, Bubble Bear. No, that's what it is. Bubble Bear finally playable. We thought Bubble Bear was gonna have its time in the spotlight when we got Formidable. But with this, this is the real answer. Yeah, this, this is a Braum card, I guess. But even, even with Braum, you're gonna have a 6-6 six, six for 6 mana burst. I don't know, guys. I don't know. I don't... I, I can't tell you if I want to pay 6 mana burst to make my Braum a 6-6. Six, six. I, I, don't, I don't think I like that. However, if you are playing a deck that also plays cards like, what's it called? The Celestial Blessing or something? The four mana, heal something for four, then give them four health. That's pretty good. It doesn't, it doesn't double the health, it just heals. The Masha has redoubled Valor. That heals and then doubles the stats. This just heals and then sets power equal to its health. Yeah, Battering Ram, sure. I, I think this card is best in any kind of Soraka deck, obviously, where you're using this on the, uh, the Broadback Protector. You're using it on this, right? Or you're using it on your Soraka to like suddenly make her like bonk for a million damage. <laughs> or Bubble Bear, sure. Is it good to Braum? Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think this is good for Braum because not only do you need to go to a different region to make this good on Braum, you also need to pay six mana just to give Braum some attack. And honestly, I don't know when you ever want to do that. Six mana is a lot, dude. Six mana is very expensive. That's why I don't think it's good. If this was five or four mana, I would consider it. But for six mana, I don't. I don't think so. Yeah, Braum also already has regen, so healing him is just kind of losing a lot of value. I, I, I guess we can say that it is a six mana card, and Aphelios Lux has been a pretty good deck. Maybe it makes sense there. I don't think so. I don't think there's really anything you want to heal to full and then double the power. I don't see it. Battering Ram with this is a 16-12 overrun on attack. Yeah, that's two cards and 12 mana. I, I'm not sure. That seems inconsistent, easy to counterplay, and just... Expensive. Yeah, I think this... I, okay, fine. The Battering Ram is probably the best option here. Yeah. What is the best card revealed, guys? All right, let me close this one. I think the best card reveal is easily this one, right? Yeah, it's this one. This is the best card. This is the best card revealed today by a pretty large margin, I think. I think it's uh, the Undergrowth, then it's the Wharf Rat, then it's Inspiring Light, then it's this, then this, then this. Okay. Best card today? Deep Support. Second best, Plunder support, I guess, but this is probably just pretty good in any build sweater deck. Next, Inspiring Light. I think this card is decent. However, I don't think it's going to be main decked. I think maybe as a one-off. Actually, you know what? No, no, no. You know what this is? This is another, this is another damn buff for Bandle City Demacia. That annoying, dumb Yordle Rally deck that plays Conchologist. And then Conchologist is going to find this card and you're going to be even more angry. It's just a Conch card, dude, because you can't play this in Scouts. Scouts doesn't draw any cards. This is just conch buff. I think Rat, Rat will see play in those monkey decks. Does anyone remember? I played that deck on stream, and then a little later, Majin Bay played it too and kind of optimized it. He definitely made it better <laughs> than my original version. I think this card would actually be nuts in that kind of pounder monkey deck. This seems like it's really good in nab decks, in the kind of deck that plays really cheap units. I just don't think this is good for... Sejuani Gangplank. Because they, they only care about their champions. In really cheap decks that play like Black Market Merchant, they play Powder Monkeys, they play the Jack Taskmaster, stuff.
stuff like that. And then their win con is usually Powder Pandemonium. This for a two mana card that will sometimes just be a five three is pretty good. I think this is a, this goes in very specific decks. You don't put this in every single build, uh, build sorter deck. I don't think this is even good for pirates. This comes down too late for pirates. Isn't the art style a little different with these reveals? It, it looks a little more realistic, doesn't it? So yeah, I guess we need to talk about Lux finally being revealed. Next champion Lux, yo, awesome. The Basha finally getting some magic. How cool is that? It seems good even in pirates. I don't know. Listen, if you're playing pirates and you want to push damage early and you want to play a card on turn two, this is going to be a 1-3. I just don't think that matters. You deal damage every turn. Yeah, but pirates just want to do damage fast and then win the game with a decimate and a fervor. I just don't see this card doing that. I just don't see this card supporting that playstyle. This is a turn five in pirates. Yeah, so you're saying that in pirates you want to have a card sit in your hand and pray that it's useful later. I don't think that's how pirates play. It's not an unsummon effect though, isn't it? This scales indefinitely according to the word. It does. So even, it only gets plus one attack the first time every turn. So if you have this on board, you play this on turn two, right? Let's hope you're lucky. On turn two, this is a two, three overwhelm. You go into turn three attacking, you put this last on the stack, something hits the nexus, doesn't matter what, this becomes a three, three while it's on the stack. That's pretty good. That effect does make it a lot better. You don't have to let this sit in your hand, but I just don't think Pirates wants to play a 1-3 Overwhelm. That's so easy to deal with. Why don't they make a card that gives tough to the Nexus this round? Honestly, they should. That's very cool. It works well with the one mana Pirate Yordle, but still not got... Yeah, the Cracks are Corsair. It's good with that. Could be an inclusion in Pink City then, perhaps. See, that's exactly the kind of deck I like it a lot in. Those are the exact kind of, like, really cheap, board swarmy decks that I think this could be good in. Because those decks also draw. Pirates doesn't draw. They have Zap to draw their Fervor or make it rain. That's it. Nox has a conditional 5 and it doesn't see play. The difference is this is Overwhelm. Overwhelm is a big deal. Will tomorrow be the next champion support cards? We'll find out. We'll find out. Tomorrow I will also be live at, uh, at the same time at 5.30 p.m. Central European time. And I'm going to keep doing this until we have all the cards. I'm, uh, I'm enjoying it. I love a reveal season, dude. I live for these moments. Honestly, chat, level with me here. Is anyone else the same? Where the two weeks leading up to the release is literally like better than the first week of the actual playing with the new cards. I feel like the most exciting moment every time new cards come out is the first day when the expansion hits and the two weeks leading up to it. <laughs> every single time. What I will say is that I am so happy that we finally have every single region in the game. We now have all 10 regions. Battle City is complete. They have all their expansions. There's no additional Battle City cards coming. That happened last time with Nar and, you know, uh, Udir, who's finally playable. What's happening now is that we get standalone expansion. And this is the first one. And that hypes me so much because they're already giving us a teaser of what that's going to be like. They literally started the first day giving variety reveals to older archetypes. Every single expansion is going to be like that now. Like Rubenzu literally posted it. Every single time a new expansion comes out, they're going to print like 10 cards for older archetypes. And they used to print some support for older archetypes, but it was like a one of or a two of. And usually those cards weren't even good enough. I think the single best variety reveals we've had were last year when we got Dra Dragon Chow and Sea Scarab. That was it. And now, I, I, I don't know about you guys, but um, I'm pretty sure that, for example, let's see, is that all? The Megatusk? Megatusk is going to make Deep a lot better. Winding Light is going to make not just Nightfall, but just any kind of target Overwhelm deck a lot better. Chamber of Renewal might low-key be really, really broken. I think this card, I would not be surprised to see this card be just busted. Undergrowth is insane, yes. I think this is the best card revealed today. This seems, this seems like it's actually going to make Deep playable. 